Mother's Day today. Um, and I want to talk about mothers, but actually I want to talk more about women in general uh, this morning. And I want to kind of uh, lead up with a, um, uh, with a movie. I don't know, you know, old timers might remember this movie. Remember the movie Pretty Woman? Was she ever that young? <laughs> Julia Roberts, remember her? Launched her career. In this movie, Roberts plays the part of a prostitute, but she's a prostitute with a good heart. A prostitute with a good heart. And in this movie, if you've never seen it, uh, Richard Gere, the, uh, the other co-star in the movie, he's a lonely but rich businessman that buys her services for a night, but he ends up falling in love with her. And we fast forward to the end of this movie and you know, uh, the end of the movie has a happy ending. It, it finishes on the fire escape here. Happy ending for these, for these two people. Now in the story, we find out that uh, Richard Gere you know, is rich. He can buy fancy clothes, he can buy cars, he can buy beauty, he can buy sex. But the thing that draws him to Julia Roberts' character is that she's honest with him about himself. And not just that she's a pretty woman. And that, there, that's where the title comes in, pretty woman. She's not just a pretty woman. She has a, she has a good heart. She has an honest heart. And this is of course the hook in the movie. He loves her for her heart, not just her body. This basically of course is the charm of the movie and the message that so many women have bought into. The message being, be beautiful and desirable on the outside and be good on the inside. This pretty woman concept and combination is promoted in the world as a guarantee to popularity and, and happiness and good self-esteem and boyfriends and boyfriends. It also sells a lot of makeup and jeans and things like that. Of course, this you know, desirable on the outside, good on the inside, ideal works in the movies and in magazines, but it's not how the real world operates. In the real world, we see that hardly anyone, especially guys, ever get past the physical outside part of a girl in order to bother discovering the true inner goodness. And you say, why is that? Well, because men uh, in the world certainly are more interested in sex than goodness for the most part. Okay, there are exceptions, but we all know that even the good guys have to struggle to get past just seeing the physical side of a woman. And most guys, again, in the world, just stop right there and don't go any further. So what's a girl to do? So much pressure from TV and from movies, from my girlfriends, from guys, from my own desire to be noticed, to be liked, to be loved, to be popular. You know what I think? I think that it's about time that Christian women of all ages started a revolution. I say it's about time Christian women did something more than just try to be pretty. I say, it's about time women became radicalized about being Christians and started a movement that created a true shift in thinking about gender and what it means to be a Christian female, a Christian woman in the 21st century. I say that the time is overdue for a seismic shift in how women of faith think and conduct themselves so that their true power can be felt in society. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the tired old neo-feminist battle for women to serve communion or preach from the pulpit or serve as elders, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a complete paradigm shift for the way Christian women see and project themselves in the postmodern world. Sisters, you're being programmed by the pretty woman manipulators to be beautiful and desirable on the outside and good and innocent on the inside. I say, 
turn the world upside down in your generation by going back to the way that God created you to be. And that is good on the outside. <laughs> good on the outside. Paul writes, likewise, I want women, and he's talking about Christian women, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for women, making a claim to godliness, good on the outside. Paul is saying, cover yourselves with good works with goodness, with modesty. This is the outside cover of a dynamic Christian woman. Now don't get me wrong, it's okay to wear you know, nice clothes or jewelry, makeup, but the thing that people notice are your good works. The thing that makes you stand out is your kindness. Now going back to the way that God created you means also that you're beautiful on the inside. First Peter chapter three, Peter says, your adornment must, must not be merely external braiding uh, the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of, of God. Good on the outside, beautiful on the inside, and then thirdly, desirable in the intimacy of your marriage bed. Solomon says, rejoice in the wife of your youth, let her breasts satisfy you at all times, be exhilarated always with her, with her love. There's a time to be appealing sexually. God says it's when you become one with your partner in marriage, with your husband, and nowhere else. There's no call for you to be desirable to any other man than your husband. Good on the outside, beautiful on the inside, desirable in the unity of marriage. If you begin this revolution, here's what's going to happen. Number one, you will break free of the slavish control of your bodies by corporate America and Hollywood and social media. You will once again be in charge of you and out of competition with other women and the impossible ideal dangled before you by those imposters who parade around as gurus of what you should look like. Full partnership. True gender justice comes only when you are free from the false image makers. Good on the outside unleashes the power of God's goodness through you onto the world. Another thing that will happen in this revolution, beautiful on the inside will bring peace and security for your soul. You see, the true feminine mystique is only found in the unique nature of a woman's inner beauty. No spirituality is as complex and influential as the power emanating from the heart of a Christian woman. A woman has not reached her true potential until she has begun to cultivate the depths of her inner beauty in Christ Jesus. You see, your potential is not that you, you know, become as good or successful as men, but that you uh, uh, reach your potential as Christians. There's the key. And then finally, the revolution will achieve what this world and its Lord want so badly to avoid. And that is, it'll put human sexuality back into the exclusive confines of marriage where it belongs. Sexuality doesn't belong on a billboard. It doesn't belong in a magazine. It doesn't even belong in a movie. It only belongs in the marriage bed. That's the only place for it. Sisters, here are some truths that come from someone who has been counseling people about sexual matters for 40 years. Some basic truths that you learn after a time. 
Truth number one, the more you preserve your sexual integrity, the less pain you will experience as a single woman, if you're single. The more you preserve your sexual integrity, the less pain, never mind about morality, the less pain that you will experience as a woman. Truth number two, the more you preserve your sexual self, the more precious this gift will be to your husbands. And truth number three, the greater your sexual fidelity in marriage, the greater potential you have for a satisfying and joy-filled sexual experience within that marriage. Your precious secret is the discovery and revelation of your sexual self to another. When done within marriage, it is the source of endless delight, which is exactly what Solomon is saying in the passage I just read to you a few moments ago. Now I know, you know some of you not hearing what I'm saying, maybe you don't get it, maybe you don't care, maybe you just want church to end. <laughs> But maybe some of you like being a pretty woman. But for those of you who hear me, this revolution belongs to you. Don't pay attention to the smallness of the crowd or the awkwardness of the day because of social distancing. Listen to what I'm, listen to what I'm saying to you. Jesus said the following, he presented another parable to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all of the seeds, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its, in its branches. If you get it, if you want it, you can be that seed and begin the revolution right here, right now, today even, in this very place. One day, long from now, you'll remember that this is the day that you left the pretty woman complex behind and rather reached out to become a holy woman, pleasing to God, precious to man, and at peace with yourself. I pray that God blesses you my sisters, and I sincerely wish you a happy Mother's Day uh, to all of those who have had uh, that wonderful experience. In closing, let me extend an invitation to those women and men who have not yet given their lives to Christ to do this by expressing your faith in repentance and in baptism. And I encourage you to do this now. Another thing that has always been ready is the water. <laughs> The church spent the money to get a plumber to fix the water, to make sure the water is always ready. In season, out of season, the water is always ready for those who wish to come to Christ and express their faith in repentance and baptism. And of course, those who need prayer to be better Christian women, better Christian mothers, better Christian men, better Christian fathers. The church, the elders are here always to pray for uh, your needs. So if anyone has a need at this time, we encourage you to make that need known as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement.